Hello everyone, this is David from IT Solutions Network and today I'm going to show you how to configure zone-based firewall on Ubiquiti's network application version 9. I'll show you how to create the zone and assign subnet to a zone and then how to limit or allow access between zones and subnets. I have a topology here with a multiple zone. For example, I have DMZ zones so that we can publish the web service to the internet. I have hotspot zone for the guests here. I have not safe for work zone where I put VoIP, IoT and the Printers. I have VPN zone where I put WireGuard VPN users and I have internal zone for the Ubiquiti devices and users. Obviously we also have the gateway zone where the only device in that zone is the gateway itself. Now let's create all the subnets and zones that we have on topology. So first would be users subnet. Let's go into our Ubiquiti device, Unify, Networks, and then here, I'm going to rename this into UI devices. And the subnet for that is going to be 10.1.1.0 slash 24. I'm going to click apply. Users. And again, I'm going to uncheck the auto scale network because I want to put the manual IPs in it and I want to dictate what subnets I want to have. It's going to be 10.1.2.1 and add. Now let's create the subnets for not safe for work. So first is going to be VoIP 10.1.3.1. Then it's going to be IoT. Uncheck 10.1.4.1 and printers. 10.1.5.1 okay so far we have five subnets we've created all these subnets now let's create the guests and vpn subnet and dmz of course i'm going to put this guest subnet into hotspot zone and that's going to be 10.1.6.1 gateway, VLAN ID 6, and add. Now let's create the wire guard. We are going to click the VPN on the left sidebar. And here, we'll make sure the wire guard is checked, the server is checked. And let's name the server remote users. Then I'll choose the ISP1 for the incoming traffic. And I'll switch to manual and I'll change the IP address here. It's going to be 10.1.8.1 and add. Now this is the subnet we are going to have for the remote VPNs, just like here. Okay. So any VPN user, wireguard VPN user coming to the internal LAN are going to have these IPs from the subnet and they're going to be assigned to the VPN zones automatically. Now let's go to the security and see what zones we have to create and how to assign interfaces to a specific zone. For that, I'm going to click security on the left side, scroll a little bit down and let's see what do we have here. Now, as you can see, all the new subnets I have created are automatically assigned to the internal zone because when we create that, we didn't change the zone. Now, for this one, I didn't need to change the zone. For these three subnets, I didn't have a zone yet, so I couldn't assign it. I'm going to create that zone right now. Create zone, click on it, and let's name it not safe for work. And as we are here, let's also choose what subnets we want to assign to this specific zone. Select, and let's do VoIP, IoT, printers, and save. Add entry proceed and that's it now we have assigned the guest to the hotspot not safe for work subnets to the not safe for work zone we have vpn users to vpn zone external subnets to the external zone and users and ui devices to the internal zone that's all we needed to assign subnets to the specific zones now it's time to actually create policies which in ubiquitous case Policies are already there. We have to add rules into those policies. First of all, let's go into topology and let's see what we need to change there. So here we are saying that a not safe for work doesn't have to have access to the other internal subnets 
and it only has to have the access to the internet and the DMZ. Now we didn't create the DMZ yet, so let's create that. Go into networks, new virtual network, and that's gonna be DMZ. Choose the DMZ zone because we already have zone compared to not safe for work zones when we creating the VoIP, IoT, and printer submits. We didn't have the not safe for work zone yet, so we couldn't change it from here. But the DMZ exists by default, so we can choose DMZ zone. Let's change this subnet to 10.1.128.1. And let's change the VLAN to 128 and click Add. Now we have created the DMZ subnet. Let's make sure that the, every single zone has access to the internet except VPN. Because I want VPN users to go to the internet through the, our gateway. So they are not going to have the access to the internet. Let's go into security, scroll down, and you see this matrix here, right? Let's come back to the topology. If you want to allow the access from the internal zone to the external, this is the policy. This is how the zone policy works. You have internal zone to the external zone. To choose this specific policy that will affect traffic coming from the internal zone to the external, you have to choose internal zone as the source and external zone as the destination. Let's do that. Here on this matrix, you see that the, we have source here and we have destination here, right? Which means if I want to choose the policy that affects the traffic that goes from the internal to the external zone, I have to choose source as internal here and the destination as external right here. So for that, I'm gonna click right this link here and it will filter and show only the rule sets that affects the traffic that goes from internal zone to the external zone. And as you can see, we block all the invalid traffic by default, and then we allow all traffic by default. So for this traffic, we don't have to change anything on the zone-based firewall policy rules. It's already allowed automatically. This is how it allows all the traffic from the internal to external zone, any destination, any source port, any source IP, any destination IP, doesn't matter how many subnets you have on the internal zones, they all are included into this one rule set. Now let's come back here and check if the not safe for work zone has the access to the internet. Would they? No, they will not by default, but we can change that. Source is the not safe for work and the destination is external. So where do we want to click? Right here. Let's click it. And let's see what do we have here. So again, we block all the traffic towards the external that is invalid. And then look at this. The, just like on the internal zone, we allow all the traffic from not safe for work zone towards the external. And as you can see, we don't have any subnets here specifically or any destination, which means any of the subnets from the not safe for work will have access to the internet through this policy because we allow all the traffic from not safe for work towards the external zone. So we are good on that part too. Now let's check if the hotspot has the access to the internet. That is guests network. Here's the hotspot, here's the external. So our click is gonna be on this one. I'm gonna click here and scroll a little bit up. As you can see, we have a little bit more rules here because of the authentication, authorization, and the portals and things like that for the guests network. But it all is allowed at the end, just like any other networks and from the internal and not safe for work zones. Because pretty much everything are allowed to have the internet without restriction. Why not? If you don't want that, you can restrict later on. Now back to topology and let's make sure that the not safe for work subnets doesn't have access to the internal or VPN zones. They don't have to do anything with these internal subnets. And to choose the proper policy, let's scroll down a little bit. Our source is not safe for work and our internal zone is the destination. So we are going to click here. But look at that, it's already blocked automatically. Now, the reason why this is blocked automatically is because we have created this zone. It didn't exist by default when we upgraded to zone-based firewall. And fortunately, Unify does the right things here. Every time you create a new zone and you assign subnets to that zone, they don't have access to the internal zones automatically. 
that's good. Now this also means that we don't have to add any rules. All the rules we need is already there. Block all traffic going from the not safe for work zone to the internal zone. And it doesn't matter what's the source and destination. What matters is the zone, not safe for work to internal. All is blocked. This is good. Now let's go to the topology again and to make sure that the DMZ doesn't have access to the internal hotspot, not safe for work or VPN. Here's our source. Here's our destination. So our click is going to be on this link. Let's click here. And as you can see, we only allow returning traffic by default, which means if internal goes to the DMZ, their returning traffic will be allowed automatically. Other than that, you can see that the, we block all the traffic coming from the DMZ to the internal zone. We just block everything. We do not allow DMZ servers to go to the internal zone. Now let's check DMZ going to the not safe for work, hotspot, and VPN zones. We should have the similar rules there automatically. If not, we can add them. Now here's the DMZ to VPN. Again, a low return traffic, just like with the DMZ to internal. We are good there. Now what about the DMZ to not safe for work? Everything is blocked, just like we wanted. How about DMZ to hotspot? Again, everything is blocked by default. So everything within the DMZ is configured as we wanted. DMZ doesn't have access to the internal, hotspot, not safe for work, or VPN zones. Now we need to make sure that everyone, including internet, has access to the DMZ. But before we do that, let's actually deploy a server on the DMZ zone. And here I have a Raspberry Pi with a PoE head. I can connect this to the PoE switch and it will be powered by the PoE switch automatically. But before we plug this in, I have to choose the proper VLAN on the switch to deliver the DMZ traffic towards this Raspberry Pi. Let's go to the Unify configuration again. I'm gonna click ports here. Now I choose, I want to work with the Pro Max 16 PoE. That's the switch I have in my lab. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and then click first interface here. And I want to choose it to be DMZ and I want to block any other VLANs. I don't want the Raspberry Pi to have access to any other VLANs because if after publishing this Raspberry Pi, someone is going to hack it, I don't want this server, this device to have access to all my other VLANs. So when you put the server on the DMZ, make sure you block all the other tagged VLANs on that interface. That's gonna be Mars, this Raspberry Pi. Make sure PO is enabled in my case, I'm gonna click apply. Now this interface is ready to connect Raspberry Pi. Okay, I plugged the mouse, it got the IP. If you go into networks on the DMZ summit, I can click IP list link here, and I can see Mars IP. That would be 119, the last octet. So let's create the port forward for this Mars so we can access the server from the outside. And let's see how it's gonna be configured in the zone based firewall. We'll have to go into routing for that. For some reason, port forward and NAT are not on the security tab, rather they are under the routing. That is weird to me because all the other networks, port forward, NAT, all of these are under the security tab, not under the routing. Anyway, let's click the routing and then do port forward. I'm gonna name it publish DMZ and it's gonna be through the WAN one, port is gonna be 80. Then I'm gonna say that the anyone from the internet can access this more server. So instead of limited here and putting the IP address, it's gonna be any. Now I want to forward this traffic to the IP address of Mars. 10.1.128.119, okay? And then port 80 again, and it's gonna be TCP only. We can log this if we want and click add entry. What just happened is that we're saying that every time there's a TCP connection from any source from the internet that goes to the public IP of our router to the port 80, we want this all to be forwarded to the internal IP address of the DMZ subnet, which is 10.1.128.119 on port 80, the same TCP. And this is going to work only through the primary ISP. 
because this is how it's configured now. Let's see if we want to add any rules to the zone based firewalls and let's see if the Unify handled that automatically. We're gonna click security, scroll down. Our source is the external and our destination is DMZ. So we want to click here. Scroll up and the C. So we have LO port forward publish DMZ. Remember publish DMZ? This is what we named our port forward entry. So basically this record is here automatically. We don't need to do any of the rule add. Now let's check if it's working. Our IP address is 198.51.157. Gonna open a new tab and just click 80, 80, no, just 80. And look at this, it's work. I can access the DMZ server from my computer. So basically our DMZ port forward works just fine. Everything we wanted to do based on this topology is already done. If you have any questions, put them in the comment. If not, just like the video if you liked it, of course. And subscribe to my channel to see my other videos in the future. Take care.